Hi everyone, it's Kunihiro. Thank you for coming back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make dashi, which is a Japanese soup stock made with dried kelp and dried bonito flakes. Dashi is a key ingredient for many Japanese dishes because dashi brings out the best flavors of other ingredients and harmonizes them well. Many of you might have experienced that you made a Japanese food but it didn't taste quite right. In most cases, I assume you didn't use good dashi. A very good example is miso soup. If you make it with a good dashi, your miso soup becomes really tasty. So in today's video, first I will show you how to make good dashi and then I will make miso soup with it. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so these are ingredients for making dashi. This is 10 grams of dried kelp. We call it dashi kombu in Japanese. It's sold in different sizes at Asian supermarkets, but they all do the same job. And this is 20 grams of dried bonito flakes. We call it katsobushi in Japanese. And one liter of water. First, please wipe the dried kelp with a slightly damp cloth. Kelps usually get some dust when they were dried outside, so you need to wipe it off. After wiping off, you still see white spots like this one. Please keep them on, because these parts will bring more flavor to your dashi and put the kelp into the water and leave it for an hour at this stage while you are waiting, please cover the pot so nothing will get in ok, an hour has passed after soaking in water, kelp will expand this much also you will notice the color of the water has changed which means some of the umami came out of the kelp now, I'm heating this up. Please make it low heat. By heating it up very slowly, you can bring out the best flavor of the kelp. Once you start seeing small bubbles on the bottom of the pot, it's time to remove the kelp. Now, please turn up the heat and bring it to a boil. You can make high heat this time. Once it starts boiling, turn off the heat. Then add 20 grams of bonito flakes into the pot. And leave it for 5 minutes at this state. At this point, please don't touch bonito flakes. If you touch, unnecessary flavor comes out of the bonito flakes. So just let them sink by themselves. And 5 minutes later, it will look like this. And next, put the strainer on a bowl and place a paper towel on it. And gently pour the dashi into it. and lift the strain a little bit and strain the dashi until the last drop falls at this point, please don't squeeze dashi out of bonito flakes let it fall naturally ok, that's it Now, your beautiful homemade dashi is ready. Next, I want to show you how to make one dish out of these used kelp and bonito flakes. First, please cut the kelp into three pieces and put them all together. 
and cut them into strips. And cut the used bonito flex into smaller pieces. Get the frying pan and put everything in it and turn on the heat. Please keep it low heat. Now add one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. One tablespoon of sweet sake. And one teaspoon of sugar. And give it a stir. Keep cooking with low heat all the way. And cook until most of the liquid is gone. Now most of the liquid is gone, so this is ready. Transfer it to a serving dish. and sprinkle roasted sesame seeds at the end. That's it! We call this dish tsukudani in Japanese. It goes great with steamed rice. And you can keep it in the fridge up to 4 days. You don't have to heat it up every time you eat. It tastes even better when it's cold. And finally, I'm showing you how to make tofu miso soup. I'm adding 500 milliliters of dashi into a pot, which is good for two persons. You can put the rest in a container and keep it in the fridge up to four days. Please make sure to let the dashi cool down completely before you put it in a container. Okay, so these are ingredients for today's miso soup. This is 2 tablespoons of white miso. I believe it's the most commonly used miso among Japanese restaurants in the US because of its mild taste. So if you wanna make miso soup just like your favorite Japanese restaurant does, I recommend you to get white miso. And when you go by miso, you will notice some companies sell miso which contains dashi already but pretty often it contains MSG, so you better avoid it. And here I got soft tofu. I'm using only one third of this today, which is about 180 grams. And this is one tablespoon of kato wakame, which is dried seaweed. When you go by this one, please don't get confused kato wakame with dried kelp. They are not the same and one green onion and 500 milliliters of dashi first soak the cut wakame in water for 5 minutes to let it expand after 5 minutes seaweed will look like this so please squeeze it lightly and remove excess water Next, I'm cutting tofu. I'm using only one third of this today. And I'm saving the rest for later use. Please soak tofu in water when you keep it in the fridge. I always finish it within 4 days. And I'm cutting tofu into bite-sized pieces.
and chop green onion. Once all the ingredients are ready to go, please heat up the dashi and bring it to a boil. You can make high heat this time. And once the dashi starts boiling, turn off the heat. And dissolve miso completely in a ladle. This way, you never leave big chunk of miso in the soup. Release gemo dashi and dissolve. Release gemo dashi and dissolve. Please repeat the same thing until all the miso is dissolved. Now give it a stir and taste a little bit. After tasting, if you want to add more miso, please do it now and add a half tablespoon of miso at the time. Then add the tofu and seaweed into the pot. Gently mix once and turn on the heat to medium. After you put miso in it, please don't boil it anymore. Miso will start losing its flavor and soup gets saltier. So turn off the heat right before soup starts boiling. Okay, that's it. Please pour the miso soup into a cup. and put some green onions at the end. Okay, that's it. Your tofu miso soup is ready. Now, let me get a bowl of steamed rice and put some tsukudani on top of it. We Japanese love to eat in this way. Okay, perfect. So here is your tofu miso soup and tsukudani rice. Okay, that's it for today. I will share more recipes using dashi in the near future. So if you forget how to make it, please always come back to this video. And if you like today's video, please give me this and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.